an outlet for competitive energy, you'd hardly expect the humble motor scooter to be the right vehicle to choose. Well, some people think otherwise, as Chris Goffey's been finding out. Scooter racing is one of the fastest growing sports on two wheels, with over 400 licensed drivers throughout the UK. Years ago, scooters meant mods, but that image of tiger tails, parkers and chrome panels is changing, and these enthusiasts are aiming to get their sport on the map. But how would you get started in scooter racing? We would join one of the 82 affiliated clubs that we have in the United Kingdom. They go from Southampton to the north of Scotland. That will entitle you to come along to a race meeting, go through your newcomers, which you've got to do, it's a, a form of training, if you follow me, for the racetrack, and then into racing itself in any of the seven classes. We also promote a street class, which means a young lad who has a, a scooter at home in the garage, dad's scooter as it was, he can bring it along and he can join in and compete as long as the, the bike is MOT and taxed. Scooter riders can enter classes ranging from standard scooters to specials and even combos. Full racing leathers and approved helmet must be worn to comply with the full safety checks and scrutineering that are imposed. The cost? Well, you could spend up to £2,000 on a second-hand scooter and any repair work needed. You need a trailer for transporting the machine, your leathers and your entry fees for a season's racing. But apart from that uh, low cost, what is the attraction of the sport? Well, it's uh, very difficult to describe. Racing, I think, may be almost, and it seems to be like an instinct. Um, some people can do well, some people, some people don't. Um, the difficulty for me is maintaining concentration. Uh, at the front, it's difficult to re remain motivated. And I, I tend to do that by uh, thinking to myself, the next lap, I am going to break the lap record. Or the next corner, I am going to find the, past the fastest possible line. And uh, by continuing to do it that way, uh, or if someone is in front of me, I really do go for them. If there is a guy in front of me, then for that race or that lap, I hate him. The combination class offers a different challenge. Here, an engine of up to a mighty 322 cc's provides the machine power. And the sidecar and passenger call for very different skills in handling. Well, you've got to get a good passenger for a start. He's most important. Um, without having a good passenger, then you're all over the place. But with a good team and a lot of teamwork, both trying together and reading each other's thoughts, then you can manoeuvre the machine left and right quite stably. But for a right-handed corner, I'd move here, turn the bars into the corner. A passenger would move behind me to transfer weight onto the rear wheel here. Now, if the front end were to drift away on the corner as I'm holding the throttle, he would conversely move his weight forward. He was flicking the back end round, he would move his weight backwards and over. On left-handed corners, obviously a different turn of the wheel there, he'll move out to transfer his weight to the sidecar wheel because that, because that becomes light, and then he will manipulate weight and move between the sidecar wheel and the rear wheel to get drive, etc., on, on coming out of corners into the straights. I think mainly we don't have a lot of spectators because the sport isn't really advertised. I mean, we've got a good, cheap, competitive sport here where every man sort of... Most of us do our own work in our own backyards and sheds and garages, and you can go out there and have a good day for very little. I mean, in comparison to bike racing, there's no comparison at all for the cost. Scooter racing looks like a very attractive way of going racing on a shoestring. And if you fancy it, get out there to the back of your dad's garage and dig out that old Lambretta. A bit of work, and you too can hit the track. Now for something.